We've seen that it's feasible that someone may call themselves a Christian, but by their actions prove that they really have no faith at all. We've also seen that while faith alone saves, faith is not just merely believing that something is true. James told us that even demons believe in the truth about God, but that doesn't save them. No, true faith is something more than mere belief. It means something more akin to the word trust. It means to put our lives in his hands. It means getting into the wheelbarrow. It means following his voice. True faith always leads to action and to change, and so by our fruits we shall be known. But what about those who call themselves a Christian, who actually do get into the wheelbarrow, who go on to walk the narrow road of faith, perhaps producing good fruit for many years, but who eventually throw in the towel and turn away from God again? Can those people who were once genuine Christians with genuine salvation lose it? In John 15, Jesus says, I am the vine, you are the branches. If a man remains in me and I in him, he will bear much fruit. But then he says, If anyone does not remain in me, he is like a branch that is thrown away and withers. Such branches are picked up, thrown into the fire and burned. Jesus is saying that anyone who is truly remaining in him will automatically produce good fruit. However, those who don't remain in him will begin to wither in this life and eventually be thrown into the fire. This is clearly a picture of hell. Jesus also told the parable of the sower. He said that some people would hear his message and be blinded by Satan, never accepting his message at all and never being saved. Others would be distracted by the lure of wealth and the pleasures of life. Finally, he says that still others would believe and would put down roots for a little while, but they would be shallow roots and these people would eventually fall away because of temptation. Jesus contrasts all of them by talking about the good seed who would put their roots deep into the ground and produce a good harvest. So the Bible says that there are really only two states it's possible to be in, a Christian producing good fruit or an unbeliever. There is no mention of a middle ground where you can be a Christian but producing no fruit. True faith always shows. Also take the time to read the parable of the talents here. The Bible talks a lot about the need to endure with our faith. 1 Corinthians 15one 2 says, Let me now remind you, dear brothers and sisters, of the good news I preached to you before. You welcomed it then and you still stand firm in it. It is this good news that saves you if you continue to believe the message I told you. In the ESV version it says, it is the gospel by which you are being saved. The use of the continuous present suggests it isn't a done deal. We are saved, but we are also in the process of being saved. The good news saves us if we continue to believe in it. In Matthew 24, 13, Jesus is talking about people who turn away from the faith due to end time persecution. And then he says, but the one who endures to the end will be saved. This suggests that those who don't endure to the end won't be saved. Peter says that people who know the truth live in it, but then go back to their old lives are actually worse off than they were before. He says, and when people escape from the wickedness of the world by knowing our Lord and Savior, Jesus Christ, and then get tangled up and enslaved by sin again, they are worse off than before. It would be better if they had never known the way to righteousness than to know it and then reject the command they were given to live a holy life. If we turn to the book of Revelation in chapter 3 verse 5, it tells us that only those who overcome will never have their names erased from the book of life. Only a name that was once there could be erased. Revelation 22:19 talks about the possibility of one share in the tree of life being removed also. Paul liked to describe the Christian life in terms of a race, stating that no one gets a prize for having been in the race at some point. The prize comes to those who stay the course and finish. He says, Don't you realize that in a race everyone runs, but only one person gets the prize, so run to win. I discipline my body like an athlete, training it to do what it should. Otherwise, I fear that after preaching to others, I myself might be disqualified. Even Paul feared that if he didn't stay faithful until the end, he would lose out on the prize he'd spent his whole life telling others about. As the time of his death approached, he reached for the same metaphor once more with gladness, saying to Timothy, I have fought the good fight, I have finished the race, and I have remained faithful, and now the prize awaits me, the crown of righteousness. We need to make sure that we can all say the same thing when our time comes. We must all finish the race. 
The book of Hebrews has a lot to say on this matter too. To set the scene, the entire Christian community in Rome, both Jew and Gentile, were suffering at the hands of the Emperor Nero, who had just made Christianity illegal and had set about persecuting anyone who identified with Jesus. He hadn't yet started killing them, that would come later, but he was making life very tough for them in the meantime. Their homes were being vandalised, their property was being confiscated, and they were being thrown into prison. It was becoming very uncomfortable and even dangerous to be a Christian in Rome at this time. Now the book of Hebrews was written to the Jewish believers in Rome. Why just the Jewish believers we might ask? Well, whereas the Gentile Christians had a straight choice between enduring the persecution or renouncing their faith altogether, the Jewish Christians had what they perceived to be a tempting third option. They could publicly renounce Christ and go back to the old Jewish synagogue. Judaism at that time was still legal. By going back to their old Judaism, they could not only escape persecution, but crucially, they could do it while still claiming to be serving the same God as before, Yahweh, the God of both the Old and New Testaments. The have your cake and eat it too option of comfort in this life and heaven in the next was as tempting to them as it is to us today. So many were taking this route. We don't know who wrote the letter to the Hebrews, but whoever it was spends his letter pleading with the people to stand firm and endure the suffering rather than going back on their faith in Christ. His message throughout is that if they reject Jesus, they are putting their salvation at serious risk. He tells them that perseverance in the faith until the end is absolutely vital. Here are some passages from that letter. So we must listen very carefully to the truth we have heard, or we may drift from it. For the message God delivered through angels has always stood firm, and every violation of the law and every act of disobedience was punished. So what makes us think we can escape if we ignore this great salvation that was first announced by the Lord Jesus himself and then delivered to us by those who heard him speak? Be careful then, dear brothers and sisters. Make sure that your own hearts are not evil and unbelieving, turning you away from the living God. You must warn each other every day while it is still today so that none of you will be deceived by sin and hardened against God. For if we are faithful to the end, trusting God just as firmly as when we first believed, we will share in all that belongs to Christ. For it is impossible to bring back to repentance those who were once enlightened, those who have experienced the good things of heaven and shared in the Holy Spirit, who have tasted the goodness of the word of God and the power of the age to come, and who then turn away from God. It is impossible to bring such people back to repentance. By rejecting the Son of God, they themselves are nailing him to the cross once again and holding him up to public shame. Our great desire is that you will keep on loving others as long as life lasts, in order to make certain that what you hope for will come true. Then you will not become spiritually dull and indifferent. Instead, you will follow the example of those who are going to inherit God's promises because of their faith and endurance. Dear friends, if we deliberately continue sinning after we have received knowledge of the truth, there is no longer any sacrifice that will cover these sins. There is only the terrible expectation of God's judgment and the raging fire that will consume his enemies. For anyone who refused to obey the law of Moses was put to death without mercy on the testimony of two or three witnesses. Just think how much worse the punishment will be for those who have trampled on the Son of God and have treated the blood of the covenant which made us holy as if it were common and unholy and have insulted and disdained the Holy Spirit who brings God's mercy to us. For we know the one who said, I will take revenge, I will pay them back. He also said, the Lord will judge his own people. So do not throw away this confident trust in the Lord. Remember the great reward it brings you. Patient endurance is what you need now so that you will continue to do God's will. Then you will receive all that he has promised. For in just a little while, the coming one will come and not delay, and my righteous ones will live by faith. But I will take no pleasure in anyone who turns away. But we are not to be like those who turn away from God to their own destruction. We are the faithful ones whose souls will be saved. Work at living in peace with everyone and work at living a holy life, for those who are not holy will not see the Lord. Look after each other so that none of you fails to receive the grace of God. Watch out that no poisonous root of bitterness grows up to trouble you, corrupting many. 
Make sure that no one is immoral or godless like Esau, who traded his birthright as the firstborn son for a single meal. You know that afterward, when he wanted his father's blessing, he was rejected. It was too late for repentance, even though he begged with bitter tears. All these verses implore the people not to turn away or even drift away through neglect, stating that patient endurance and constancy in the faith is what they needed. Indeed, perseverance until the end. Those who turn away would do so to their own destruction. Now in John 10, 28, Jesus says, I give them eternal life and they will never perish. No one can snatch them away from me. Some people say this means it is impossible to lose salvation. However, the verse only says that no one can be forcibly removed. It doesn't say that no one can leave his hand. So how do we lose our salvation? Some people are worried that whenever they commit a sin, they lose their salvation. However, since we're saved by faith and not works, that belief is unbiblical. If you could gain your salvation by works, you could lose it by works. But since we gain salvation only by faith, we can only lose our salvation by losing that faith. Please don't panic. If you sin, you are not cut off from God. If you fall down, you are not cut off from God. If that was the case, we would all be cut off from God. We are not saved by works and we're not lost by works, good or bad. You cannot lose your salvation that way. We are saved by faith alone and lost by lack of faith alone. Jesus bridges the chasm created by sin that separates us from God. It doesn't matter how big your chasm is, how many sins you've committed. By continued faith in him, we are guaranteed of salvation and eternal life. So when you sin, just repent, ask forgiveness and keep on going with your faith in Christ. Don't beat yourself up about it or doubt your eternal salvation. Again, the Bible clearly teaches us that we are saved by simple faith in Christ and can have a present assurance of salvation based on that faith. However, the message of this part is that we must go on believing and trusting if we're to arrive safely home. In other words, we are presently saved and we are also in the process of being saved. We must keep on persevering until the end.